and welcome to episode six of the Knit in Pearl podcast. My name is Ivy. I am a knitter based in Vancouver, Canada, and this is my uh, video podcast where I talk about knitting and all of my crafting. Um, well, this is Scout, and I had actually thought that he was going to stay a little bit longer, but I guess not. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like as soon as it's very disappointing that he left. Um, so before I get started in talking about the crafting, I actually wanted to take a couple moments just to say thank you. Um, my channel has over a hundred and I think over 150 subscribers now. And when I started this podcast in, I think either March or April of this year, um, I really didn't think that I would ever get that many subscribers. And I know that a lot of, you know, people on YouTube say, uh, say things like that, like, oh, I didn't think anyone would watch. Um, and personally for me, whenever I watch someone say that, I wonder, like, oh, you know, did you, did you not? But I really truly mean it because I started this podcast as a way to talk about knitting um, because I, I really enjoy this hobby and I don't have anybody in my life that is also a knitter um, or like knits as maybe prolifically or <laughs> obsessively as I do. And when and I really like something, I want to talk about it. And I was really finding that space of my life missing. Um, and yeah, and I really enjoy watching knitting podcasts. And I thought, you know, I could, I could give it a try too. I didn't really think that uh, anyone would watch these videos, um, since I'm not particularly um, good at knitting. It's just something I've kind of started doing seriously this year or semi seriously. And so I'm I'm getting better and I'm practicing skills, but uh, you know, definitely not as advanced as a lot of the other knitters out there. So my projects, um, yeah, I just didn't think that anybody would watch them. I also didn't think that I would finish that many projects to be completely honest. Um, and both parts surprised me this year. Um, <laughs> it's funny to have so many subscribers because it, it feels like more people than I actually know in real life. Um, I thought, you know, even if my friends watch it, that would be great. Or if one or two people give it a watch and as long as no one's like too mean, that that would be a really, really cool thing to have out there and just something that I was doing for myself and um, yeah, just something to try and wasn't going to put any time or effort into it. And well, not time or effort, I mean constraints, no, no rules around like how often I had to podcast or whether or not I finished. But yeah, I'm, so thank you for everybody who has uh, watched one of these videos or commented or given it a like. Um, I'm always so happy whenever someone makes a comment and uh, the, the comments that everyone has made have been so positive and detailed and long and it's just really warms my heart that um, any of you would have taken time out of your busy days to say something kind to you know, a stranger on the internet. And that's, that really warms my heart. And it, it's a reminder that, you know, the world needs more kindness. So thank you. And for myself as well, I'm surprised that I finished so many items so far this year. I started the year thinking, you know what, it'd be pretty cool if I knit a sweater sometime in 2022. And I have definitely knit a few now as well as summer garments. And yeah, it's, it's been a really pleasant surprise and one of the real highlights of my year so far. So thank you, everybody. Um, but diving into the actual content, I have one finished object, semi-finished, and kind of three finished, uh, sorry, three works in progress that I'll talk to, and then we'll jump into my some life stuff. Um, what I'm wearing, I am wearing my outline tank by Jesse Mame. This was a finished object in the previous podcast, and I knit this in Hobby Cotton, Rainbow Cotton 8.6, but this is actually from last year's Black Friday. So, yeah, 
course there's going to be cat hair on this even though i brushed it right before this podcast and just showing you all the fit of it um and i love it um this is my first fingering weight summer garment and it even though it's 100 percent cotton um it and it's you know a little bit thick given the fact that it is uh not as thin as as like machine knit or woven fabric it is super comfortable and hasn't been that hot um to wear despite the fact that vancouver has been going through a heat wave and i knit this um i knit most of this on my trip to turkey and i just love having an item that will always remind me of a really great trip that i took i let's see what else can i say about this i knit this in the size I think I knit this in the second size. Ooh, this is this is awkward. Let me grab my. I have an actual knitting notebook because I'm terrible at using Ravelry, and I typically write the sizes of things. Yeah, I wrote. I knit this in the small because I actually went down quite a few needle sizes to get um, a dense enough fabric that I liked, and I went down to 2.75 millimeter um, because. Uh, at the recommended needle size, which in this pattern is 3.75. Um, the fabric that it made was too see-through for my liking. I wanted to be able to wear this without a bra, as you can see, and I didn't. I wanted the fabric to be opaque, and I took a chance, didn't do a gauge swatch, and just went for it, and I didn't even change the, um, did not change the needle size for the ribbing at all and I love it I think the fit is like perfect to be honest it's exactly the crop I like like hangs off my shoulders really nice um personally I could I could stand to have the v-neck go down even a little bit lower um I think that's just the difference in my row gauge and and or I actually did another modification I did was I did one fewer uh, German short row at the shoulders because, okay, so the way that the top knit is knit is constructed is knit bottom up. You do the ribbing, you uh, go up and around, um, and then you split for the front and back, and that is knit flat. And each side of the front, the left side and the right side, um, is also knit separately and it's knit flat. And then there's sh uh, German short row sh shaping at the shoulders, um, at the front and the back. And then it's seamed together with a three needle bind off. Um, you pick up the stitches at the edge, sorry, at each like armhole um, and you do the ribbing and then you bind off. Uh, and then throughout all of that, um, this, does, this pattern does feature drop stitch design. So in the pattern, it will tell you when to drop the stitches and um, yeah, and there are drop stitches on the back as well. So that really quickly is how the garment is constructed. And for myself, I did one fewer German short row at the shoulder shaping. I don't know why. Um, like I don't understand short row shaping enough to have had a garment construction reason. I just did it because I was tired of knitting this top. I was on like planes and I, you know, there's some part of me that thought if I just did that fewer row because I would have to do it less here, less here, and then on that back, it would um, be, oh, excuse me, I need to sneeze. <coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, it would be quicker, <laughs> just tired um, and lazy. And I guess the other reason was I just like looked at the top and was like, ah, this is big enough. Um, but I think if I were to, to knit this top again and I, I think I definitely will knit this top again because I love the fit of this. Even if I don't do, um, I if I were to knit this top again or when I knit this top again, I will probably do the full shaping in this size. I think that will, should allow the V-neck to hang down a little bit more. Um, and, or I'll make another modification to get like a little bit of a lower V. Um, yeah, cause I, I don't mind a deep V. Um, and what else was I going to say about this? Um, 
Yeah, and and if I were to when I make this top again, I mean, I might even construct it without the drop shoulder uh, detail. I just find that the fit of this is so nice. It kind of ends up being like the perfect boxy crop t-shirt um, that's like relaxed and looks so easy breezy and yeah I just I just love the fit of this so yeah I, I could totally see myself making this and not even dropping the stitches and just having it as kind of like a, a v-neck shirt recipe for myself um, and I've worn this out quite a bit since I finished it and I have had when I to tell people that I, I made this you know a lot of the time they say they they didn't even know that like it doesn't look doesn't look homemade it doesn't look diy um and that is a, a big compliment to me i think so personally my i still feel my german short rows the um doubled stitches and the resolving of the double stitches it could be a little bit neater but i'm happy that in this pattern the short row shaping is at the top near the seam so i don't find it very noticeable and I think that's all I wanted to say about this pattern. Um, took me a while though, because boy, I think something on 2.75 millimeter needles is not a quick knit. But did I learn anything? No, I did not. Um, okay, so then let's dive into my finished object. So this is my finished object. Um, I actually had technically started this the last podcast, but I don't think I even showed it because I was only at the stage of casting on, I believe. Like, I'm not even sure if I joined in the round yet. Um, so this is finished, but this is the Cold Shoulder Crop by Park Williams of Park and Knit. And here it is for your viewing pleasure. Um, I made this in the size, the first size, and I made this in a, uh, bamboo cotton yarn. Um, I believe it's called Himalaya bamboo and it is 60% bamboo, 40% cotton. And it's this lovely mint. It's, yeah, it's a very cool mint that, um, a little bit brighter than what's showing up on camera and I knit this on the suggested needle size which is four millimeter um, as you can see the ends are not woven in that is on purpose that I will explain but what can I say about this pattern um, it was a lot of fun to knit so this is a raglan pattern. Um, as you can see, the uh, raglan has some cable details um, on either side of the raglan on the front and back, and it's knit top down. So you start by casting on um, and then yeah, casting on stitches for the neckline, and it's done in two by one rib, I believe. Yeah, two by one rib, which I actually find I really like two by one rib. Um, no, haven't used it very much, but yeah, like this is nice. And then um, as you're, you know, increasing after the neckline, um, which you knit to be about a mock, mock neck length, um, then you are uh, increasing for the raglan. And as you're increasing, you're knitting this like lace pattern for the sleeve cap, which is combination it's mostly just like yarn overs um and decreases and super easy to knit super easy to memorize as well as uh cable detail um on each side of the raglan and the cables do go in different directions i am very pleased that i actually remember to do that each time and yeah and then after you uh, get down far enough, you join, you, I, there's no really like splitting for sleeves here because there are no sleeves in this crop top. Um, 
but you put the sleeve stitches on hold or the shoulder stitches on hold and then you uh, knit the body and I did the option with waist shaping. So Park Williams in this pattern uh, gives two options of how to do the body, either like straight down boxy or I did waist shaping, um, which is like decreases on the side. And yeah, then you do the bottom hem, which is also two by one rib. And then you pick up uh, and like, put the on hold needles back on and uh, do an I cord edge around the shoulder, um, the sleeve cap, arm pit hole, arm scythe, I don't know. Um, and yeah, I finished blocking this garment just a couple days ago. And let me see, I think the best way to talk about this though is probably if I put this on and I will do that and I will come right back. Okay, I am back. Um, so this is it on and I'm wearing it as, uh, I'm going to wear it this episode because my plan is actually, I think I'm going to rip this out and redo it. And this is going to be a long story of like, I didn't, basically I didn't do a gauge swatch and I measured the finished gauge on the blocked garment right before I started filming and the pattern gauge is 22 stitches and I am at 19 like 20 so the actual fabric is it's not see-through and actually I do like the weave of it um because it's really light like the drape of it is really nice but it is large and probably in my opinion a little bit too large for the kind of fit that I wanted out of this garment um the suggested ease, I think, is anywhere from like negative three inches to positive three inches, I think. And I didn't I didn't want negative ease because I, again, do want to wear this braless, but I also don't, I didn't intend to have it have this much positive ease. So as you can see, and I'll try and show you, the, the um, top is kind of a, ends up being like a very loose boxy fit and I had pictured it um, being more fitted on the waist especially with waist shaping and um, especially and with the ribbing like I kind of wanted it to cinch in a little bit more at the waist than it is doing so I'm just gonna show this because it's a little a little nipply here I think um, yeah so it's like quite loose and baggy at the sides and part of that is on me. I do have a, um, I have a smaller waist, I think, potentially. So I've, I haven't measured my bust in a while, and I should probably do that before, at least before the next episode of my podcast. Um, I think my bust is about thirty-three inches, and I think my waist is about in the twenties or something, maybe twenty-five. Does that sound right? I'll put my measurements, maybe here future Ivy when you're editing please remember and don't do that thing where you're too lazy and don't like to watch yourself and just skip right over I'm just gonna do this a bit more so I can get that framing right okay now I'll put my measurements here and so yeah I wanted this top to um, be a little bit loose up here maybe a little bit of like a bubble fit and then just at least have the the ribbing cinch in and I mean the length of it is fine but yeah I think I think overall my what I want to do is rip this out and re-knit this on a smaller needle size. And if I had knit and blocked a gauge swatch, I probably would not be in this position right now. Um, and I have to admit that I did not. This is my second pattern that I've knit by Park Williams. The first one being my Ghost Whisperer top that I had knit earlier this year and also didn't measure my gauge at all for that top and that is a mohair uh, top on knit on big needles so like the sizing and everything of that was just very loosey goosey um i mean she didn't say that in the pattern i just decided to do that and this one i thought i mean you know, what's a few inches between friends? And yeah, I just didn't do it because I was really excited to cast this on. 
And this was really fun to knit. Um, I really like knitting lace. I really like watching the pattern emerge. Cables are not as, cables are okay. Like I know, I know some knitters really love cables, but it is really cool. I find it still like quite magical when, you know, you can watch a cable emerge um, as you're knitting it. And uh, I just really love the look of this garment. Um, I still, I feel like I might have even, if I were to, you know, when I knit this again, I should block this more symmetrically. And I do love this mock neck kind of fit at the top. Um, there is no shaping. So uh, in terms of like front or back shaping, so the front and the back are the same. Um, and there, I saw some pattern notes in Ravelry talking about like kind of how large this arm opening is. I think it's actually okay for this size um, and the garment that I ended up with. And yeah, so basically everything that I did where I was like, I'm going to make a decision and modify this pattern. Um, I don't, didn't really like. So yeah, like not knitting a gauge swatch. I'm probably going to rip this out and redo it. Um, and then for some reason, I thought it would be cute to like kind of continue this, try and continue something to do with this cable pattern, like down and around the armhole. Um, in the pattern, it just kind of ends when you're uh when you are just starting the body like it just ends and i was like oh maybe i'll just continue detailing and i and now that I've done that like i just kind of did these like little pearl bumps here i don't like it here's the other side like what am i doing i don't like this either um and i kind of went up another needle size on the i cord bind off more than what was recommended because the other way other time i'd done an i cord bind off was on the ghost whisper and I thought that I was worried it was going to be too tight. It's not. And I kind of feel like maybe it should have been a little loose, uh, tighter and oh yeah. And I like, for some reason I, um, when I cast on, I didn't really leave myself a long tail and yeah, I'm a little bit worried about it unraveling. So it's a few things. So basically what I did was I, oh, and, and, I was starting to feel like it was maybe not coming out exactly the most flattering um, as I was knitting it. And so in another series of unfortunate mistakes, I instead of like putting the stitches on hold and trying on the garment, which is the advantage of knitting a top down seamless garment where you even do the neck line, the, the collar, like first instead of doing that I just kind of like I tried it on a few times but I thought it was okay and I think where it really okay you know what taking a step back and giving more credit to myself I think where it really went off the rails for me was um, at those shaping because I I should have done some more shaping than what was in the pattern um, I think the fit of it was actually great until then and the other thing I was also aware of is that because there's cables and lace, I was also aware that the final fit of the garment would really depend on um, what it would look like after blocking. And I wasn't sure like how much of the lace pattern would relax or how much of the cables would relax and you know if it would pull things down or whatnot. So because of that, I was really hesitant to um, do any more shaping than I already did. I think as it is, I might have, I might have modified it a little bit. Um, I think I did one fewer row in between each set of decreases. Um, why? Why did I do that? Oh, because I think my I had decided my torso was probably shorter than what it was likely graded as, and thought that the um, cable and lace would like relax and just kind of drag the the top down a little bit more I think that's why and yeah like that was that's okay like the length is okay so that I'm not not upset with that but I think overall when I knit this again I will do more decreases and probably look up some more um like knitting guides on you know how to do waist shaping a little bit more and try and get this a little bit more fitted towards my 
um, my actual body. And I don't mind if I end up even with like a little bit of negative ease at the waist and positive ease at, at the bust. I think that would be really cool. Um, the other reason why I, so I knit it with four millimeter needles. It was pretty speedy and I kind of knew like, okay, maybe I should probably have gone down a needle size, but my 3.5s are being taken up by my no frills card again. And because of that, I was honestly just too lazy to, um, yeah, I was too lazy to switch the needles out and like think I'd have to switch back and forth. So yeah, yeah, pretty much it's like if I had just, you know, like measure twice, cut once and now, yeah, I'm at the situation where I didn't measure and I'm going to have to cut twice. Um, but this is my cold shoulders crop and I do love it. The pattern is really easy to follow. Very fun to knit. Uh, like I said, very speedy to knit. I'm hoping even on 3.5s it will go speedy and I like the color. Um, I think it's actually looks kind of, I think the, I don't think the color, I was going to say like, I think the color looks good on me. I haven't even worn this out because I haven't been pleased about the, the fit of it. And half of it is, half of the ends are woven. And I always do this thing where I weave in the ends and then I decide that I need to take it apart. So that is going to be a nightmare. Um, but yeah, I, I am really looking forward to knitting more designs by Park Williams because um, I love them all. Um, and I bought this when she was having, I think, a birthday sale at the start of the year and or something like that. So yeah, and I have a couple other patterns in my library by her. Um, that's all I want to say about this. Yeah. Okay. So that's my only finished object. Um, oh, and it's like really cool, even though it's kind of hot this summer in Vancouver. Um, all right. Then I am going to jump into my works in progress. The first one I'll do really quickly because um, it is my no frills cardigan. I have actually knit a little bit more on this. So I put a um, stitch marker here to indicate where I was the last time I podcasted to show you all how much progress I made. And I ended up taking the needles off anyways because I was knitting a gauge swatch of something else, which I didn't end up using those needles for, but yeah, this is my No Frills Cardigan by Petite Knit, a pattern by Petite Knit. Um, i knitting this out of Sam Niskarn Alpaca, which is 100% alpaca yarn. Um, it's super, super soft. I am done the sleeves and I'm at the point where I'm just knitting the body back and forth, down and down and down um, for... Maybe I think I have another 10 centimeters to go before I mark off for pockets and then I knit past that and then I knit some more. And yeah, it's at this point where it's just a lot of back and forth, back and forth, um, which I actually don't mind. I do kind of like this mindless knitting and this yarn is such a delight to knit with. It is so like elastic and bouncy. And I'm not, I found out this summer that I don't mind knitting with cotton yarns. Um, doesn't bother me at all. Like the only thing that's a little bit annoying is the fact that my hands are drier knitting it. But yeah, it's not something I mind. Um, and I'm not necessarily someone who is dying to go back to wool because I prefer uh, like summer items in my wardrobe anyways. And I don't tend to wear a lot of sweaters. So while I will be knitting sweaters and knitting with wool in the fall, I not necessarily looking forward to the finished products as much. I don't have anything in my um, queue or library that I'm just, I just really feel like I need this in my wardrobe, though I do have a lot of yarns that I'm looking forward to knitting with, if that makes sense. Um, this is the one exception. This is like, this is the item that I'm really looking forward to having in my wardrobe because I have a, gap for a warm winter cardigan and I think this is going to be really warm and really cozy and I cannot wait till it's done and I've knit a little bit on it but not that much mainly because I don't know if you can see this little gold oh no you can't 
this little gold. It's been like, you know, just an inch and a half, if that. Mainly because it's been so freaking hot here. Uh, I'm at the point now where knitting this means having this whole kind of cardigan in my lap um, and switching it back and forth. And it's so warm that it's just not pleasant to knit on. Um, so I am looking forward to the weather getting cooler so I can continue on with this. And I am going to the movies tomorrow. So this is going to be the project that I bring along, I think, and hoping that I can get a lot done in the air conditioned movie theater. And that is it because I've talked about this top, uh, this garment a lot. And I'm still not done. And I'm also going to miss summer knitting because it's nice to finish items quickly. Um, second work in progress. This is also going to be one that is not going to be done for a long time. It is a crocheted item. And I don't know. All right, I'm just going to talk about this. I have a uh, last year I started getting into crafting and fiber arts by learning how to crochet. I'd never learned, you know, to crochet growing up and I really, really loved it. Um, I crocheted a bunch of stuff, most of which is no good. Um, and also discovered how fun it is to buy yarn. And I bought a lot of acrylic yarn because it was cheap and I didn't really understand anything about fiber, like the makeup of the fiber and what it might actually do to garments. Um, and over the last year or so I've started, you know, either selling or giving a lot of that yarn away because, um, I realized I'm not going to use it and I am going to be moving and I'd much rather knit with like all of the way too much, uh, natural fibers that I already have. Um, however, I still have some acrylic yarn in I kind of kept a lot of the white cream shade and the blue shades and I have been toying with the idea of making a rug from it and I tried a few different things like I even knit this long I've been knitting had been knitting strips um in this kind of like herringbone zigzag pattern it's really hard to see which is one of the reasons why I'm no longer doing that and it was taking forever um and I just I had like two or three strips done and I needed to do like six more and I just I just realized like I wasn't I wasn't gonna do it um so I thought yeah maybe if I crochet it it'll go faster because in general um I found that with crochet, the item grows much more quickly than with knitting and it ends up being denser. And that is certainly true. So it's like the same yarn, um, three strands, I'm holding it um, three strands together. Hey, sorry about, I got a phone call and the whole camera recording thing just went to heck. Um, okay, yeah, so I, it's just like three strands of random acrylic creams and whites and blue held together. I think a lot of this is from ice yarns. Um, and, and I think I've got like Karen one pound somewhere that I'm going to get into. Um, and that was, yeah, herringbone pattern that I was knitting on that I actually really didn't like because I was using size 12, 12 millimeter needles. And it was just taking so long, like back and forth, having to switch it. This is much more enjoyable. It is crochet it's a linen stitch so it's and it's based off a free pattern of like a scrap scrappy rug that I'm just kind of modifying for my own self I think it's 160 stitches long and um linen stitch is um chain one single crochet and you're putting the single crochets into the previous rows chains and yeah I started this I want to say sometime this week uh, or last week and have been crocheting away every once in a while. I'm trying to keep it by me and actually do some work on it. But I'm also very cognizant of the fact that I will likely, you know, it will go the way of the other one, which is I get a spurt and then I just don't. And I'm going to have to own up to the fact that it clearly doesn't bring me joy and I'm not going to work on it um, and then find a way to get rid of this yarn. But not yet. I'm going to give it another try before I learn my lesson. And that is something I say a lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I mean, and I actually have no idea, like, 
if I end up finishing this, how the rug will look, if I'll even like the rug in my space, um, you know, if it's going to be comfortable or long lasting at all. But I, I like the idea of having a rug or um, having more home items that have been made by me. And yeah, I don't have anything else really that um, is on the docket, maybe some baskets, but you know, with three cats, like there's going to be a lot of cat hair in those baskets are stuck to the wool. And this is something you can't really tell. And I'm uh, crocheting this with a 5.5 millimeter hook. And I am going to keep chipping away at it. One of the reasons why I switched over to knitting was I do like the, the drape um, of knitting more. And I, I feel like um, I, I prefer the look of knit garments to the density of crochet garments. So I know that that's a really broad generalization. The other reason is because um, it, I find it, it's easier for me to get wrist pain with crochet versus I can knit for quite a long time and not get any pain. So something I'm going to be aware of. That's it. Um, and then my last work in progress is uh, a very new one. So there's not a lot to talk about yet, but this is the Velocore, um, which is a pattern by Andrea Mari. And it is knit bottom up. So all I have is the ribbing, which is not very impressive and just maybe not even an inch of the body, but I will hold it up to the camera a little bit more, which is over here for you to see it. Um, this is a boxy, oversized, I think crop, but could, um, though it looks a little bit more full length in the pictures, um, short sleeve top by Andrea Mari. Uh, I purchased this as part of her birthday sale. That was a few weeks ago. And um, I was just browsing through her patterns because I couldn't resist the sale and love the look of it. And excuse me if you hear things in the background, Atticus is playing by himself in the pantry as he does and yeah like I, I just like love the look of it because it's this um it's kind of three different colors and again I'll hold this up to the camera and it's knit um with kind of like uh slips slip stitches and um like one stitch cabling that where the, the main color will kind of end up being like both stripes horizontally through the fabric as well as these vertical bars all the way up. And then there'll be some stripes that are uh, one more contrast color. And I actually did knit a gauge swatch for this, but it is not going to be that useful because um, I, yeah. And the reason why I ended up casting this on was uh, in my last podcast I talked about my yarn haul from Turkey and one of the yarns that I showed off was this yarn which is um I think it's it's Vibra Natura I think it might be chic or something and it's a color changing yarn you can see there is it's white with um reds purples and blues and it is really kind of two ply um but each ply or each part of the yarn always has like a white portion. Um, and then the other part of that is the, the one that's color changing. It's kind of like a, a long, slow color change. And this yarn is, I believe, um, wool, linen, and silk maybe. Um, and I'm not sure what's what, but I remember in that podcast, I was saying to myself like, oh man, I wonder what I'm gonna knit with this because um, I have some other color changing yarn or uh, variegated yarn that I, I just never know what to do with because I'm not, it's like my mind sometimes looks at color and it's just struggles and I just give up and I'm like, okay, I'm going to move on. Um, and after that, Scout, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's just the couch. It's just the couch boo-boo. It's like digging into the couch blanket. You want to come sit with me? Um, 
where was I? Okay, yeah. So I have I have other variegated yarn in my stash, and I have not knit with it because uh, I, sometimes I look at different colors, and my mind just gives up, and I can't think of what to do. And I also do recognize that for most of my wardrobe, it's very neutral. So like this would be a really different pop of color for me and my aesthetic. Um, and I was looking through the project pages on Ravelry for the Velocore and noticed that some folks had knit theirs with like a color changing yarn as the contrast color. And I thought that that would be a really cool and interesting way to highlight this really unique yarn and also kind of tone down the color changing effect to be um, hopefully something that I could integrate into my wardrobe more easily. And that is the plan and we'll see how it goes. Um, so far, I'm really liking it. I'll show you the swatch that I knit. So yeah, that was always the plan. And I started with, and the reason why I knit a swatch for this was because this yarn is technically um, listed as like a DK weight, I think. And it's kind of thick and thin um, in some areas because of the wool, like it's a bit thicker on this strand and a bit thinner. I don't know if you can see that, the strand next to it. Um, it's, yeah, like maybe where my palm is, you can you might notice that one strand is thicker than the other. And so it kind of varies um, throughout this ball, I've noticed. And I also wanted to see how the wool would um, block out because I wasn't sure if it was gonna bloom a lot and, um, because the pattern is listed for a light fingering. So like this, this yarn is very not light fingering. And I found some black cotton, um, mercerized cotton that I had in my stash. And I thought that that would be a really nice contrast. And this is a swatch that I knit. This is a swatch that I knit with it. Um, you can see it kind of goes from purple to pink um, and I really liked it. I also recognized that it might not end up being, I thought that the black actually made the top bolder than maybe I wanted it to be. I wanted the color changing effect to really be toned down by um, a neutral as the main color and I thought that this kind of drew the eye a lot more and in fact highlighted those color changes and I thought that if I were to choose this black color, it would not be as wearable um, for that reason, for myself, um, for my preferences. The other reason why I didn't go with this swatch was I realized that the mercerized cotton, oh my goodness, I don't know if you can tell in this camera, yeah, you can kind of see it where it just like is a magnet for cat hair. Like I couldn't get rid of it as I was knitting on it. You know, the strand itself was just like always covered in cat hair. Um, and as nice as it is and as soft as it is and like perfect for this project going into it, I just realized that like having that much cat hair stuck on it also made it less wearable to me. So yeah, I was kind of disappointed that this isn't this wasn't what I ended up going with. Um, and I am going to have to think about what to do with this yarn now because I have enough to make a garment and I'm recognizing now that any garment's gonna end up covered in cat hair. Um, and this is going, so the yarn I end up choosing is uh, more of this Himalaya uh, bamboo cotton. This is in a light gray um, and I have two balls of this. And I do think so far, I am liking the effect that this one is having more. It is toning down and like kind of, you know, melding with the color changing and like making it more like, I don't even wanna say this, like backgroundy, like don't look at me. You know, I'm not that exciting and bold and that's actually what I want. Um, so that is that. And then the final contrast, um, so I'm just trying to like stash bust at this point is my last ball of this hobby rainbow cotton 8-4 which is like pretty much a DK sport weight um and it's very very close in shade to this so it's going to be a very low contrast second contrast but my hope is that I will use this ball up and actually the pattern 
that say you don't even have to have this third contrast. It only appears like every five or six stripes. Um, and part of the reason why I wanted to do this is because, yeah, I thought like a low contrast, but maybe slightly thicker bar could have a, a slight bit of visual interest to break things up. And then also I am going to be playing some hefty yarn chicken with this. this I am knitting the smallest size in the pattern. The smallest size uses 500 and six yards, I think, and I have a, maybe exactly 500 meters of this because I have two balls, and that's it, because this is from Turkey, I have no more. So fingers crossed, but I also do know that Andrea Mari puts about 10% um, buffer into her yardage estimates because she does account for like gauge swatches and just, you know, the differences between um, skeins of yarn. So Fingers crossed that both balls I have have above average yardage and fingers crossed I am going to have enough yarn to finish this project and just fingers crossed in general because I did not gauge swatch with the yarn that I went with. Um, I also am knitting the smallest size. I am also knitting it on three millimeters. The pattern calls for 3.25. Um, which is going to end up with a little bit of a denser fabric, which I do like. Um, again, I don't want this to be see-through, and I, I like the opacity of this. And I am really crossing my fingers that even though the fabric is going to be denser, it's going to be a little bit smaller, which is good because the smaller size does still give me a lot of positive ease for my frame. And I would like it just a little bit less than that. And I would like it also to take a little bit less than that. And I would like this to be really cute and not something I have to rip back like this one. Wish me luck, everyone. Um, and then the final thing is that, yeah, it is going to take a heck of a long time to knit because this is garter in the round. Um, I'm knitting these on my Chow Goose shorties, the ones that, um, this is the only one I have in three millimeter. They're with the mini sock set. So they're little, these are three inches tips and I don't mind them, but they're probably, like my knitting speed is probably not as fast as uh, I am with my normal four inch tips. And this is my first garment that I'm doing multiple colors in. I'm so proud of myself for stepping outside of my comfort zone, in both, you know, aesthetic because multiple colors is not something I typically, you know, even look for in a garment. Um, and yeah, you know, changing up my knitting. And I did do, I alternated skeins um, in my, Nurture sweater, which is also an Andrea Mari pattern. Um, I don't even know if I made that maybe even before I started podcasting. Um, and I'm trying, I'm just like alternating skeins by just kind of bringing the yarn up uh, through the back, like it kind of mentions in the pattern. And I'm trying to do it very loosely because that was something that I didn't do a good job of in my other sweater. So, again, fingers crossed, this is going to be like a going to be a photo finish I hope it's going to be a race to the bottom probably and there are so many things that I could do wrong or I could pull it off perfectly like right that's that would be really cool um so send me positive vibes because yeah I think I think there's a chance I could pull it off perfectly <laughs> um and that is it it's all I have to share with you all. Um, life stuff. I am moving at the end of the month. I will be finally out of this apartment and moving into a new place. And I am hoping to do one more podcast in this space before I move. Um, part of the reason why I've been so diligent about doing podcasts is because I want to kind of honor this apartment that I've lived in for four and a half years, um, kind of was with me through lockdown. We didn't really do lockdown in British Columbia, but through the, the kind of worst two years of COVID, touch wood, um, and that, you know, has been really like my first, you know, home and loved living here and I'm really going to miss it. It does not have air conditioning, which is the main reason I am moving again. Otherwise, I'd be here forever. Um, and yeah, I'm going to really miss being in this space. Uh, my next place isn't too far away. In fact, it's comically close, but and I'm looking forward to that too because it's a new chapter of my life. Um, 
I'm looking forward to decorating it because uh, it'll be a little bit bigger. So we'll not have enough money to buy like a ton of new furniture or anything. But yeah, I'm really going to miss this apartment. And I hope to podcast more, one more episode here to honor the space a little bit more. Um, however, this next month is going to be mayhem. The next two months are going to be mayhem for me. So I don't know if my next podcast will include any finished object or even much progress on my works in progress. Um, I will be going to Montreal, Ottawa, and Toronto for about just over a week, two weeks. Um, I have a friend's wedding and my best friend will be meeting me in Montreal. That'll be really fun. Then I have, uh, there's a lot, you know, work has been very busy and then will continue to be busy. Then I move. Then I will be going to Brazil for, um, again, a week and a half likely, um, for another friend's wedding. And that a week prior, I will be working remotely with another friend in Brazil. Um, and that will be really fun and exciting and then come back and then, you know, more work stuff. So, so far, the way I'm looking at it is that November is going to be really chilled and relaxed. But up until then, I've got a lot going on. A lot of those things are exciting. And they're things I'm looking forward to. But for an introvert who likes to sit down and be sedentary, it's just going to be a lot of go, go, go. And last weekend, I came back from a trip up to Whistler, which is the big ski resort mountain that is uh, here in Vancouver with my best friends. And that was so much fun. It was our, it was our girls trip. Um, and yeah, I had a, had such a great time. Um, and miss the cats and will miss the cats. That's the worst part about traveling for sure. Um, and we'll be spending a lot of time packing and donating. I'm at the point now where I'm like, how much, I don't have that much stuff. It'll be easy which is what everyone says before they start packing. So I know that that bubble is going to get burst because next week the boxes are arriving. And after that, I am hooped. Um, But other than that, I think that's it. Um, Thank you for watching if you have watched so far. Um, And if you like, please leave a comment. Um, I'd love to know what you're knitting on. Um, And what you think of my just overall chaoticness. I'm a chaotic person in general, and I guess it's no surprise that I've taken that approach to my knitting as well. And that, like, you know what, just whatever, I'm just gonna do what I feel like, and it'll all work out, even though I don't have enough skill or know how to know how it's gonna work out and and or knit fast enough that I mean it's just it's just mayhem. But I'm having a lot of fun, which is the important thing really. Um is what I'm telling myself. And I hope that you're having fun watching me. I hope that you're having a good summer. Um, and it hasn't been too hot if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. And yeah, um, next time you see me will likely be after Montreal. And this background might look a lot different. And then after that, I will be in my new place. And it'll probably look very similar because it's just like, I have no art. Uh, and this is because couch is moving with me. But yeah, please let me know what you're knitting on. Um, leave me a comment if you like. Subscribe if you like. It's been really amazing having people subscribe to my channel that I've never met in real life. That's so wild. So thank you very, very much for indulging my monologue and hope you have a great day. <laughs>